This video is on problems dealing with atomic orbitals and quantum numbers. Before proceeding, I would highly recommend getting the atomic orbitals handout that you have read and the notes uh, that we have taken in class, particularly the atomic orbitals diagram and the, notes, and the notes that go along with that. That will be very beneficial to you as you're looking at these example problems and trying to work them out on your own. There are three learning targets that we will hit in this video, uh, and each of these will attack one at a time. Uh, you can read them there. Uh, the first one we're, we're going to start with is number seven. We want to be able to define and identify orbitals by letter designation, shape, and relative size and energy. So first problem, we are simply asked to identify the sublevels in each energy level. What we mean by that, this is just an example, if we were asked to identify the sublevels in the second energy level, uh, then we would know because it's the second energy level, there are two sublevels, and we would simply label them 2s and 2p, going along with the letter designations that we have learned. The next one, the fourth energy level. The fact that there are that this is the fourth energy level means that there will be four sublevels, so we will label them 4s, 4p, 4d and 4f. The third energy level would have three sublevels, so those would be labeled 3s, 3p, and 3d. The first energy level just has one sublevel, so that would simply be labeled 1s. And then finally, the sixth energy level would have six sublevels. The first four we should be very familiar with, 6s, 6p, 6d, and 6f. And then after f, uh, the letter designations simply go in alph alphabetical order. So the next two would be 6g and 6h. We rarely deal with these uh, in, in, in our problem solving. In fact, we, we never uh, see these, not for this class at least. Second question. We were asked to compare and contrast the shape, size, energy, and orientation of the 2p orbitals. Well, the shape of these orbitals, all three of the 2p orbitals have the exact same dumbbell shape. Recall that p sublevels contain three orbitals. That's why we're, we are referring to three uh, orbitals here. And here are a picture, or here are pictures of the three orbitals. You'll notice the shape of them is all exactly the same that dumbbell shape or figure eight shape, however you want to talk about that. That is the same for all of them. They all have the exact same size. All three of these orbitals would have the exact same energy. They, in other words, they are degenerate. The term that we use for that is degenerate. And the reason we know that is they're all in the same sublevel. All three of these orbitals are in the 2p sublevel, so they all have the exact same energy. And then the orientation, as you can see from this first picture here, each orbital is oriented on a different axis in space. Um, if we could read the lettering down here, I believe this one is labeled PX. This one is labeled PY, or no, actually I think that's PZ. And this one is PY, I believe, if, if we could read that. But you can see they're all oriented in different directions. We say they are mutually perpendicular because they're all 90 degrees away from the other two. If we combine these three, and this is what it would look like if we were looking at the entire 2p sublevel as a whole, we can see those three p orbitals are all oriented on different axes in space. The third problem, very similar to the last one, we were asked to compare and contrast the shape size, energy, and orientation of the 2p orbitals with the 3p orbitals. So now notice we're comparing orbitals of the same sublevel designation. They're both p's, but they're in different energy levels. So we're talking about the 2p orbitals as compared to the 3p orbitals. So the shape, all the p orbitals would have the same shape. The fact that one's 2p and another's 3p makes no difference. Uh, they'd all have that same dumbbell shape. The size of the orbitals, the 3p orbitals would be larger than the 2p orbitals simply because it's a higher energy level. The energy of the 3p orbitals, those would be more energetic than the 2p orbitals, again, because it's at a higher energy level. And their orientations, uh, the 3p orbitals would have that same mutual 
perpendicular orientation of the 2p orbitals just like we saw on the last problem. Here are a picture of these orbitals we're talking about. This top row here, you can see they're labeled the 3p orbitals. And notice the shapes of them, it's the same shape, the same dumbbell shape as you see for the 2p, uh, but they are just larger. And notice that they are all oriented on a different axis, just like the 2p's are, so the orientation is the same. So that completes the problems for the first learning target. We have defined and identified the orbitals uh, based on letter designation, shape, and relative size and energy. Next thing we want to do is we want to be able to apply the idea of the quantum numbers, uh, the four quantum numbers, N, L, M sub L, and M sub S. And actually in this video, we're not going to deal at all with that fourth quantum number, that M sub S. That is something we will look at uh, when we get to writing electron configurations at the end of the unit. So the first problem in this section, we are asked to write the set of three quantum numbers, that means N, L, and M sub L, that describe each orbital. So for the first one, we want to write the set of quantum numbers that describe the second 4p orbital. I think what I'll do here is I'll just show you the answer and then explain uh, the answer so you can have that in front of you as you're looking at it. So the answer you can see here, and in my opinion, the best way to go about this is just think about the, the quantum numbers in order. So get your N value first, then get the L value, then get the M sub L value. So for this first one, the, I know this is N is equal to 4 because we have a 4P orbital. We're in the fourth energy level, so N has to equal 4. So I start there. I know L is equal to 1 because it is a P orbital. If, it's, if we have a P sublevel or a P orbital, uh, think of it either way you want to, then L has to equal 1. Uh, that's how we know that. And then as far as the M sub L value goes, uh, recall that that corresponds to the specific orbital we're talking about. Because L is equal to 1, look back here, L is equal to 1, the smallest possible value of M sub L is negative 1. So that would correspond to the first orbital, but we're asked about the second orbital. So the first orbital is negative 1, the second orbital would be 0, uh, going up uh, 1 from negative 1. So that's how we get N equals 4, L equals 1, M sub L equals 0. Second question, we want to write the set of quantum numbers that describe the fourth 5D orbital. Here is the answer. N is equal to 5 because we have a 5D orbital. It's in the fifth energy level, so N is equal to 5. L is equal to 2 because it is a D orbital. If it's a D orbital, then L will always be equal to 2. And then the M sub L value describes which particular orbital we are asked about. The first orbital would have an M sub L value of negative 2 because it starts at negative L. If L is 2, then the smallest M sub L value is negative 2. So negative 2 would be the first orbital. Negative 1 would be the second orbital. 0 would be the third orbital. And then plus 1, as we're asked for here, that describes the fourth orbital. So that's why M sub L is plus 1. If we were asked for the fifth orbital, then it would be plus 2. The 3s orbital, first thing you might be thinking here is why doesn't it say the first or the third or the seventh 3s orbital? Well, recall that s sublevels only have one orbital, uh, so there's only one possibility here. And the answer here is n is equal to 3 because we're in the third energy level. L is equal to 0 because it's an s sublevel or an s orbital. L is always 0 for an s sublevel. And then M sub L is 0 because that is the only possible value of M sub L. If L is equal to 0, uh, then M sub L can be anywhere from negative L to L. Well, the only possibility here is 0. The third 6F orbital. Here is our answer. N is equal to 6 because it is in the 6th energy level. L is equal to 3 because we have an F sublevel. That is the letter designation L for that sublevel. And then finally, M sub L is negative 1. That corresponds to the third orbital in that 6F. Uh, thinking about this, uh, negative 3, if M sub L were negative 3, that would be the first orbital. Negative 2 would be the second orbital. And negative 1 would be the third orbital. 
Sometimes you might see a question asked like this where it says any 3p orbital where it's not corresponding uh, to a particular orbital. So the way we would write that would be something like this, or at least it's how I usually see it written. Uh, N is 3 uh, because we're talking about the third energy level. L is 1 because it's a P sublevel. And then for M sub L, because we're asked for any of the 3P orbitals, uh, it could be any of these three. These are the three uh, possibilities. If L is 1, then M sub L could be negative 1, 0, or plus 1. So we could just write it as that. M sub L equals any of those three uh, values. And then we could also be asked this question in this manner, where we're asked to write the set of quantum numbers for each of the 4D orbitals. And so uh, we would write it something like this, where n is equal to 4 because we are in the fourth energy level. L is 2 because we have a D sublevel. And then M sub L would correspond to negative 2 being the smallest possible L value up to positive 2. And notice the difference here. We have the word and uh, because it's asking for each of these. So it would be all, all five of these M sub L values, negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, and positive 2. This next question is the exact opposite of what we just did. Here we are going to identify the orbital that is described by each set of three quantum numbers. So you'll be given the quantum numbers and then we'll have to write the description. For example, the second orbital and the 3p sublevel, something like that. So looking at the first example here, we have n is equal to 3, L is equal to 1, M sub L equals negative 1. Just like in the last problem, I would take each of these just in order and, and figure out what your answer is going to be. The fact that N is equal to 3 tells us we're in the third energy level. If L is equal to 1, that means we are talking about a P orbital or a P sublevel, so this is 3P. And then if M sub L is negative 1, corresponding to L is equal to 1, that's the smallest possible M sub L value. So this is the first 3p orbital. Again, just going through that thinking, we know it's 3p because n is equal to 3 and l is equal to 1. Remember, if l is 1, that has to be a p sublevel. And then we know it's the first orbital because the m sub l value is the lowest possible value in this situation. Next one, n is equal to 5. That tells us fifth energy level. l is equal to 3. So that tells us it's an F sublevel, and then an M sub L is plus 2. So this is 5F, and we just need to figure out which orbital it is. Well, consider that if L is 3, the smallest possible M sub L value is negative 3. So just start counting up from negative 3. Negative 3 would be the first orbital. Negative 2 would be the second. Negative 1 would be the third. 0 would be the fourth. Positive 1 would be the fifth and positive 2 would be the 6th. So the answer here is the 6th 5f orbital. Um, here is where if you, if you don't have it out, um, your uh, diagram on atomic orbitals that we drew in class and or the, the notes and some of the figures in that atomic orbitals handout will be very uh, convenient for you to look at uh, because some of this it's nice to have a visual of as you're thinking about this stuff. So going on to the next one, we have n is equal to 3, l is equal to 2. Well, that would correspond to a 3d orbital. 3 because n is 3. And then we know it's d because l is equal to 2. Uh, at the d sublevel always corresponds to an l value of 2. And then to determine which orbital it is, again, just count up from uh, the bottom. The smallest possible m sub l value here is negative 2 because l is 2. So uh, if m sub l would be negative 2, that would be the first orbital. If it were negative 1, it would be the second. If it's 0, like it is here, that's the third orbital. So this is the third 3d orbital. Here we have n is equal to 2, l is equal to 0. So that would be the 2s sublevel. 2 because n is 2. s because l is equal to 0. That is the l value for an s sublevel. And then there's only one possible m sub l value because negative l to positive l would be simply zero here. So this is simply the 2s orbital. There, there, is, there isn't any more than just that one, so we can just call it the 2s orbital. Here we have 
n is equal to 4, l is equal to 2, so that corresponds to the 4d sublevel. And notice here we have two different values for m sub l. We're told it's either negative 1 or 0, so this is a 1 or the other situation. The negative 1 value would correspond to the second orbital because the lowest possible m sub l value here would be negative 2. So negative 1 would be the second orbital, 0 would be the third orbital. So here we would probably answer it the second or the third 4d orbital. That's what those uh, quantum numbers would correspond to. And then finally we have n is equal to 7, l is equal to 1, so this is a 7p sublevel. Again, p sublevel has an l value of 1. And then we're given m sub l values of negative 1, 0, and plus 1, all three of them. So this would be all or each of the 7p orbitals, or each 7p orbital individually, because this is all the possible m sub l values for that sublevel. The last question that goes along with this learning target, we are asked to determine if the set of three quantum numbers, n, l, and m sub l, is allowed or not allowed. So here you'll be given a set of quantum numbers, and based on the rules we've uh, come up with for writing these quantum numbers, you'll say whether or not it's allowed or not. And if it's not allowed, you're asked to state why it is not allowed. So the first set here, we have n is equal to 3, l is equal to 1, m sub l equals 0. The best strategy here, in my opinion, is just to start at the beginning and ask yourself, is that value okay? In other words, can n equal 3? Well, yeah, that's perfectly fine. We know n starts at 1 and goes up from there, so 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So that's good. And then if that value is allowed, go to the next one and ask yourself, is this value allowed? Is that okay based on what we already know? Well, in other words, if n is equal to 3, can l equal 1? And the answer is yes, it can. Uh, so that's okay, and we know that because l starts at 0. 0 is the lowest possible value, and it goes up to n minus 1. So l in this case could be 0, 1, or 2, so this works. Now that we know that L is okay, ask yourself, can M sub L uh, be zero in this situation? And the answer is yes, it can be. We know that the possible values of M sub L go from negative L up to positive L. So that in this case would be negative one, zero, or positive one, and that fits that criteria. So for this set, that is in fact allowed. Next one. N is equal to 4, L is equal to 2, M sub L equals plus 3. The N value is fine, N can equal 4. L, that is also okay. If N is 4, then L could be 2. It could be 0, 1, 2, or 3, so that works. M sub L, however, this is not allowed because if, if L is equal to 2, like we have here, then M sub L would be limited to the range between negative 2 and positive 2. So this does not fall in that range. So this is not allowed. And our reasoning, I think it's the, the easiest way to give the reasoning is just to state the rule. We know that the m sub l value can only be equal to negative l up to positive l, and that does not fit this description. Next one, n is equal to 2. That's just fine. L is equal to 2. Well, that's not, that's not allowed because we know that l can go up to a maximum of n minus 1. So that would be 1 in this case, 2 minus 1 equals 1. So this is not allowed based on that rule. L can be 0 up to n minus 1. Uh, we don't even need to look at the next value because um, L isn't, isn't allowed, so it doesn't matter. That set would not be allowed. Next one, n equals 9, L equals 6, m sub L equals negative 5. At first glance here, you might say, well, that's not allowed. We never have n is, n is equal to 9. That's too big. Well, there is no limit on, on the n value. It could go up to a million. Um, that, that, is, that would be allowed. That would be fine. So n is equal to 9 is fine. If n is 9, then L could be 6. That could be anywhere up from 0 up to 8, because that would be n minus 1. And then m sub L could be negative 5 if L is equal to 6. So even though this is a set of quantum numbers that we would not see applied to much that we would look at, it follows all the rules, so that's just fine. All right, last one here. We have n is equal to 0. That is not allowed. 
uh, the smallest possible value of n is 1. Uh, so n is equal to 0 does not work, so that is not allowed. We can stop right there because we know n can be 1, 2, 3, or any other positive integer. All right, so we've hit up the second learning target there for this video. And then the last one, we want to be able to identify the number of electrons, orbitals, and or sublevels in orbitals, sublevels, and energy levels. So in other words, uh, we'll be given... A, a particular sublevel or energy level or orbital and we'll be asked to de de uh, determine the number that can go in that uh, for that question. So problem seven, we are asked to determine the number of orbitals in each. So we're gonna be given some, um, some value and we're simply asked to find how many orbitals there are in that, um, in that question. So the first one is actually kind of four questions. We wanna know how many orbitals are in S sublevels, P sublevels, D sublevels, and F sublevels. This is just a good review of what we've talked about in class and what we've seen with our quantum numbers. Uh, and the answer here is simply uh, S sublevels contain one orbital, P sublevels contain three orbitals, D sublevels contain five orbitals, and F sublevels contain seven orbitals. The third energy level Recall that the number of orbitals in any energy level is equal to the expression n squared. So n here is 3 because it's the third energy level. So 3 squared, that's 9. So 9 orbitals in the third energy level. The fifth energy level, same thing we just talked about. The fifth energy level, that would be 25 orbitals because 5 squared is 25. The 5d sublevel. The fact that this is 5D makes no difference. It could be any D sublevel. It would contain five orbitals because every D sublevel has five orbitals. Likewise, the 7S sublevel, the fact that it's 7S makes no difference. Every S sublevel contains one orbital. The 4D sublevel, well, going back to what we just said about D sublevels, the fact that this is 4D makes no difference. This has five orbitals. Continuing with the same question, uh, I just wanted to ask a few more here. Uh, so we have the sixth energy level. And so six squared, that's 36. So that is 36 orbitals. The 6P sublevel, all P sublevels, regardless of energy level, contain three orbitals. So just three orbitals there. The 2P sublevel, well, that's exactly what we just said. That would be three orbitals because it's a P sublevel. So to sum to summarize what we have here, uh, the expression n squared that gives the number of orbitals in any energy level. So two squared, eight squared, twenty-seven squared, whatever energy level you have, and then there is one orbital in any S sublevel, three orbitals in any P sublevel, five orbitals in any D sublevel, and seven orbitals in any F sublevel, regardless of the energy level. Last question. We are asked to determine the maximum number of electrons that can go in each. And here are just some reminders uh, to keep in mind here as we uh, take a look at these questions. First of all, from just from the last question, we know that there are n squared orbitals in any energy level. Also recall that we can put a maximum of two electrons in any orbital. So if we combine those two ideas, that means that the maximum number of electrons in any energy level would be the expression 2 times n squared. And then also just remember that the S, P, D, and F sublevels, those contain 1, 3, 5, and 7 orbitals respectively. So a 4D sublevel, the fact that this is a D sublevel, we know that there are 5 orbitals, so that would mean a maximum of 10 electrons because you can put 2 electrons maximum in any orbital. The third energy level, here the answer would be 18 electrons maximum and that simply comes from our 2 n squared expression. n is equal to 3 because it's the third energy level so 3 squared that's 9, 9 times 2 is 18. The 6 p sublevel, the fact that it's a p sublevel, that means it would have 3 orbitals so that is maximum of six electrons, six times two, excuse me, three times two is six. 
Same question, just a few more here. A 5F orbital. Notice we're asked the maximum number of electrons that can go in a particular orbital. Well, regardless of what orbital it is as far as energy level or sublevel, the answer is always 2. Because any orbital, whether it's S, P, D, or F, regardless of which energy level it's on, can hold a maximum of 2 electrons. The sixth energy level. So 6 squared is uh, 36 times 2. That makes 72 electrons maximum. The 3s sublevel. Well, it's an s sublevel, so that it has just one orbital. So that means it can contain 2 electrons maximum. The 4f sublevel. f sublevels contain 7 orbitals, recall. So 7 times 2. That is 14 electrons. So to, so to summarize what we've seen here, the expression 2n squared gives the maximum number of electrons in any energy level. And then S, P, D, and F sublevels can hold a maximum of 2, 6, 10, and 14 electrons respectively. And that is the end of the problem. So uh, we have hit up all the learning targets. And I hope you have found this very helpful.